This is a Space News Update for the evening of April 14, 2008. In the news today, the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket successfully deployed a next-generation communications satellite for ICO Global Communications this afternoon. The Atlas rocket lifted off right on time at 4.12 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time from Space Launch Complex 41 at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. This is Atlas Mission Control at T-10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. Atlas Engine Ignition, ignition. 1, 0, and liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket carrying ICO G-1 for ICO Global Communications and Lockheed Martin Commercial Launch Services. The G-1 satellite will enable the new ICO nationwide mobile interactive media service providing live mobile television, a new level of interactive consumer navigation, and enhanced roadside assistance capabilities. Despite concerns that high winds would force a postponement of today's mission, the Atlas rocket lifted off right on time at 4.12 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Solid rocket booster burnout occurred 91 seconds after launch. The spent solid booster casings were jettisoned at T plus 2 minutes and 17 seconds. This was followed by first stage burnout and Centaur second stage separation at 4 minutes and 21 seconds into the flight. Centaur main engine start number 1 occurred 10 seconds later at T plus 4 minutes 31 seconds. The protective payload fairing was jettisoned from around the spacecraft at 4 minutes 39 seconds into the mission, and about 10 minutes later at T plus 14 minutes and 28 seconds, the Centaur main engine shut down. After an 8 minute coast phase, the Centaur restarted at T plus 22 minutes and 32 seconds, and this was followed by a second cutoff at 27 minutes and 41 seconds into the flight. After a three-minute coast phase, the Centaur reoriented itself to spacecraft separation attitude and successfully deployed the ICO G1 satellite into orbit. About 20 minutes later, ground stations in Australia picked up the spacecraft signal to confirm its health and a success for today's Atlas mission. And we are seeing PU operate as expected, continuing to operate the RD-180 at 100% thrust. Coming up on SRB Jettison. We have SRB Jettison, both brake wires show a good jettison of the SRBs. RD-180 continues to operate normally. We are now 28 nautical miles in altitude, 58 miles downrange, traveling at 4,900 miles per hour. This was the first Atlas V launch to take place from Cape Canaveral this year, and the rocket carried the largest payload ever lofted by an Atlas V launch vehicle. The ICO G1 satellite is over 27 feet tall, and it features a 12 meter unfurlable mesh S-band reflector. It provides 16 kilowatts of power with solar arrays that span over 100 feet when deployed. The spacecraft weighs a total, a total of 6,634 kilograms when it is fueled on the launch pad. The ICO G1 Next Generation Satellite will deliver advanced nationwide mobile interactive media services to portable and handheld devices. The ICO MIM service will provide live mobile television, a new level of interactive consumer navigation, and enhanced roadside assistance capabilities, all made possible by the ICO G1 satellite. With this launch, ICO will become America's first nationwide mobile interactive media company.
We have spacecraft separation. Both brake wires indicate a satisfactory separation of the ICO G1 spacecraft. And we have spacecraft separation. We have just seen a successful mission for ICO, Lockheed Martin Commercial Launch Services, and United Launch Alliance. The team has completed the mission successfully. For more information on the mission of the Atlas today and other space news, please visit the Spacearium at www.spacearium.com or spaceflightnews.net. For this, this podcast archived as well as archives of all of our previous space news updates, please visit our website at www.dailyspaceupdate.com. This has been a Space News Update for the evening of April 14, 2008. Thank you for watching and listening.